Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel where we talk all things photography. Today, I'm going to be shooting some sports photography with a boxer called Larry Ekendu. I've known Larry for about six months now and I sat in on his last training camp for, at the end of 2017 for his last fight. He's got a fight coming up in March. I'm going to go along and shoot his training session today so I thought this would be a great opportunity to give you guys some quick sports photography tips. We take for granted autofocus back in the day. Autofocus never used to exist. People would have to manual focus and for a sport I bet that was a total nightmare. So I'd pretty much always recommend using autofocus. There's a few different versions of autofocus. Let me just grab my camera here. You've got your one shot so if you focus on one thing and if you've got beep on you'll hear the beep and that's when it's focused on one area. One option with the autofocus drive that I like to use is autofocus servo. Servo means servo mechanism, coming from the Latin servus, meaning slave, meaning it will always follow your one point of focus. So this is great if you are tracking subjects. So like Larry dancing around the ring, I'd have it on AF servo and I would just have my focus point over him at all times. Also, and it might seem obvious, one thing you need to consider when you're shooting sport is your shutter speed. Everything's moving fast, or usually is in most sports, so you need to have a fast shutter speed. Now, it's not always the easiest option, especially in boxing gyms and things, because it can get quite dark, but compensate your fast shutter with a higher ISO or a smaller depth of field. Thankfully, I have the 50mm 1.2 on the Canon here. That will allow a lot of light into the lens, which will allow me to then dial it down with a fast shutter speed. Ideally, I don't want to be shooting at 1.2 because the focus area is so small. But I've not been to Fight City before, so let's get going and see how it looks. Okay guys, so packing fairly light today. I've got the 5D Mark IV. I've got the 7D body as a backup, the 70 to 200 lens, the 24 to 105, and I've got a couple of little uh, mobile camera attachments, suction cap, things like that. See if I can get any footage whilst Larry's training and whilst I'm shooting. Let's get this in the bag. Oh, and I'm using the Evox CP26L rucksack. Okay. Uh, it was an online order. London is glorious today. Um, so one of the other things that you might want to consider if you're having trouble uh, balancing your shutter speed with your ISO and all that stuff and you're just really getting to grips with your camera settings would be to put it on shutter priority mode, take a few shots, make sure you're at a shutter speed where your subject isn't too blurry. Let the camera do the rest of the work and you'll get it once you get used to the settings and have a, just have a play around. Just make sure your ISO, ISO is not ramping up too much because um, you don't want it to be mega grainy. Or maybe you do, use a little bit of artistic license. Larry, pretty good day. It's uh, spots of lightness and dark in that gym, so it was a little tricky to balance everything. Gonna head back home now and maybe get some editing done hopefully today. Ok 
Okay guys, thanks for making it this far in the video. Thanks for watching and coming along with me on this shoot with Larry. I hope this video brought you some value and maybe you learned something from it if you're looking to get into sports photography. I guess if there was three takeaway points from the, this video, I would say play around with the, your AF servo function on your camera, get used to it, try it at home, have it on, pan from one thing to the next, see how long it takes to focus from one object to the next. Really get used to that, get used to knowing your camera before you go into sort of a sporting situation to shoot because you don't want to be fumbling about with that. Secondly, speaking of fumbling about, I would say don't be afraid to use your shutter priority mode. Things in sporting conditions, in sport environments, they happen and they change so quickly. The last thing you want to be doing is saying, now should I be racking my ISO up or down or is it my f-stop or whatever. Play around with the functions at home, have that shutter priority mode on and yeah, don't be afraid. It's not big and it's not clever to always be on manual. Sometimes that isn't the best option. And thirdly, as you can see by some of the pictures that I've shown, it's not always the glory moment of a sporting event or practice which helps tell the story. Sometimes it's the small nuances, the little things that you might not notice straight away. It's the, you know, the wrapping of the hands, it's sitting on the edge of the ring at the end of the a hard session or it's the puffing of the chest in between rounds that help really tell a whole rounded complete story. So I guess that would be my three pieces of advice for anyone looking to get into sports photography. If you've got any other questions on sports photography or there's things you would like me to elaborate on, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks very much for watching guys and I will see you on the next one. Also, if anyone was wondering how I filmed and took pictures at the same time, I've got this little hot shoot attachment for my camera. And uh, this video was actually the first time I've used it in this manner. So I just put my uh, phone on video and uh, shot away and uh, got some decent clips out of it.